Hi, I'm Mark Darren, designer on Tales of Monkey Island, and you're listening to the audio commentary for Episode 4, The Trial and Execution of Guyverse 3 Point. I'm Mike Stemley, a designer on Tales of Monkey Island, and I wrote this episode. I'm Ryan Jones, I'm the concept guy, and I drew stuff for this episode. I'm Nick Herman, I'm a cinematic artist for this episode, and I make cutscenes. I'm Eric Parsons, cinematic artist. And this is Dave Grossman, uh, design director for the studio, which means I don't really do much of anything. <laughs> so, uh, interesting story about this whole opening scene here. Um, Sean Vanneman and I kind of did, did a little double teaming on the writing of this, and there were conflicting director's notes on the opening cutscene. Sean had written in, Guybrush and Morgan have a long row into the island. And because I was looking to save money, I had written in, uh, we cut directly to the dock. And yes. uh, Nick, when he uh, did the uh, choreography for this, uh, correctly decided to go with the long row in, which uh, yeah. made it nice and moody and set the tone for the entire episode. I might have gone against the uh, the, d- the director's decision, but uh, uh, I, I was having faith in myself, and hopefully, or, and yeah. luckily it worked out, I think. <laughs> As soon as I saw it, I, I got angry for about two seconds and then said, oh, wait, this is much better now, so <laughs> we went with it. I also remember us having a, uh, a big discussion about the scene and, and somebody using the phrase, start on the money, uh, which I thought was a really good idea just to focus right on that bag of money that she gets her yeah. and kind of set up yeah. the whole thing. It's a mystic voodoo summons that makes a lot of weird noises. This is a hard scene because there's a lot of lot of stuff we had to set up, yeah. including those weird summons and objects. Well, there was a lot of discussion about how we were going to get Elaine into the courthouse, and I think that's where the the whole idea of the voodoo summons came from, so that she would just have to do it. Because if she was all crazy, why would she follow it? Why would she do it just because it was given to her? <laughs> but if it's voodoo, then it's okay. Can't argue with voodoo. Judge Wallace P. Grindstump, one of many characters in the uh, Monkey Island game that are named after former LucasArts employees. <laughs> oh, Stan's jacket. Boy, we did not know whether this jacket was going to work until, like, days before the thing came out. He was sweating it. it was Every the day first we were coming around saying, is that jacket ready yet? we got to see the jacket. Pretty yeah. sure it was the first thing on the list of things to do and the absolute last major feature to come <laughs> yeah. in. It was literally the first bug I wrote up for the database is we have to have Stan's jacket. <laughs> and everyone promptly ignored you for yeah. five weeks. Yes. Yeah. It's funny, too, because uh, uh, afterwards you, I was watching a bunch of different reviews and you can tell who was the... Uh, who were fans of the original Monkey series because a lot of people wrote this up or in the review said there was a bug on my, you know, on my version of the game where this jacket was weird things. It was, we worked uh, so hard to put that bug in. Good, good attention to detail on it too. I remember Kevin walking by my desk and and pointedly asking me, when Stan walks across the room, is the pattern supposed to move with him or not? Because mm-hmm. we yeah. had to do either way. Yeah. And look, there it goes. <laughs> Stan was also uh, inspired by my dad. He just looks like a clean-shaven version of my dad. (laughs) I love the voice we got for Stan. He sounds a lot like Phil Hartman, uh, which is kind of where we were going with. Kevin Hammond? I don't even remember saying exsanguinate. No, no, I'm not questioning your professionalism. It's just that I don't even know... Stan and Kevin in the background and the pictures on the wall. Don't worry, old bean. Oh, yeah. Is that really what that is? <laughs> I was really not sure this was going to work. I, I remember reading the script for this bit, and, and it was really funny, but I was just trying to figure out how we were going to do it visually. Uh, but it was great. We did it, the, 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 uh, it was one of the playtest favorites. Well, why did you put the wig in there, Mike? I never really understood the wig. The, the, the wig of foppery? That's the one. Uh, just to make fun of our contest winner. Uh, for <laughs> Since the uh, case was all based around uh, uh, a contest we held to I mean, what what evil guy thing did Guybrush do to you. So we decided to give him a silly wig when his case got tossed. 
I put it to you. I know you originally wanted the cat to put you wrapped up in casts. <laughs> well, yeah, we decided we couldn't have a moving oh, right. cat, uh, so it was a question of how he wouldn't be moving. Shock the monkey. Objection. There's no evidence. You did a pretty good job of covering the uh, all the kinds of things that you would want to do in a courthouse setting as, yes. as Guybrush, because you get to, not only do you get to, like, object to things and call witnesses and stuff, but you tamper with evidence and you bribe a witness and, you know, good, good stuff. I still want to find myself under those leg lamps in real life. evidence just ran out the door, I guess old Stan's going to have to drop this one. Good idea. Your Honor, I'd like to introduce this leg lamp into yeah, the there it is. Catherine Krebs is lying about her so called nacho sauce. <laughs> Catherine Krebs, <laughs> an interesting <laughs> character. They look like my clients, but who knows how they got there? Did you care to elaborate? He <laughs> <laughs> just stopped. I, I, I don't know if I should. A lot of people think she's actually Captain Kate. She's not Captain Kate. She is her entirely different character. Isn't like Ricky Rouse or Ronald Ruck. Was she ever planned to be <laughs> Kate? For about ten seconds, we thought she might be Captain yeah. Kate, and then we said, "No, nah, it's much more interesting if she's not." It's kind of one one back reference too many. Yes. It's like the homage to CSI. That whole case. <laughs> yes, we had the whole CSI puzzle with the. Uh, Spilling 18 different kinds of caustic fluids on the leg. It was originally a much nastier puzzle before we kind of trimmed it down a bit. Um, yeah, if you think it's hard now, you're wrong. <laughs> you're wrong. Yeah. At one point, didn't it? Wasn't the solution randomly generated? No, the solution is every... randomly generated be to, because I love random. <laughs> I love any puzzle where you can't actually put out a fact for it uh, and tell people exactly what to do. The pox is getting nastier and nastier. Ooh. You can tell by the screen shake. Yes, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> the eyeball puzzle used to be a lot harder, too. Yeah, I couldn't figure this puzzle out. I think I resorted to asking my girlfriend. <laughs> Oh, the eyeless door. Pop it in your eyes. I know it's creeping me out. How do I look? Dangerous. You. I think you mean. Looks like he has pink eye. Sure, whatever. Now about your testimony. No problem, mi amigo. Just. This whole thing about pirates and missing limbs and organs and various things gets it treads a line at times. I was recently arrested. Trying to get some contacts right and just like that for Halloween, but uh, but they were like fifty bucks, so. Uh, Forget that. You can actually get red for your, the white of your eye. Yeah. It, yeah. Oh. It was, yeah. Cool. Yeah, it, was, uh, it was too much. Too much for Halloween for me. Wasn't it in Last Action Hero with Arnold Schwarzenegger? Yeah, the guy with the. Yeah. yeah. I did do the pox skin and the Winslow beard though, yeah. which I kept for several months after Halloween. <laughs> <laughs> Wait, beard, not this kid. What I do like about a lot of these uh, cases is how a lot of Guybrush's stupid actions in the first uh, episode have come back to haunt him. Uh, you know, faking the uh, faking the porcelain power pirate and uh, getting in that bar fight that you didn't see. Uh, it basically messed up a whole bunch of people and cats and things. <laughs> it's kind of one of the one of the benefits of. Working like in the in the extended form, you know the the episodic model, so that you can refer back to something that happened months ago, and people are like, oh yeah, wow, remember that? Yay! More sword fighting and piracy. Another. I love all of our sword fighting scenes. Yes, all really fun. Man, I got so much attention at my desk when I was setting this scene up. Yes. Or, <laughs> Nice. Everyone walking by and seeing the cat fight. Whoa! Oh, whoa! All right, calm down, everybody. <laughs> Pretty epic. Club 41 was uh, the most fun environment to design. Yeah. Just loads of junk everywhere. Tell me, did it hurt? I love the alligator holding the dartboard. I think that's the idea. No, but this will. 
And Elaine and Morgan take the longest possible route. <laughs> <laughs> and travel separately. <laughs> I don't know if it's going to show up, but Derek's painting of the uh, seductive... Oh, yes, the, <laughs> the Odalisque pose. <laughs> yeah. Merleader. Really disturbing. Yeah, take a look at that next time you play the game. I don't know how you can miss it. <laughs> I try to block it out, actually. <laughs> Know that and I, and I got you. Kate's over there playing Mumbly Peg. Yes. <laughs> Catherine. Uh, um. <laughs> like wine stump in the back. <laughs> His chin. It's a little bit scared, but he's just chilling, mostly watching. Protecting his bottles. You are formally summoned to appear before the court of Judge Grindstump in the case of the people of Flotsam. Oh, poor Gabbard baby manatee head. Yeah. <laughs> And I really the, like uh, all of them. Yeah, did they actually name him? Is, 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 is she named Trixie? I think so. Okay. <laughs> you also have the uh, the screaming narwhal up there. Uh, all of uh, Vanaman's dialogue in this scene is uh, great. The uh, keep your hands away from my husband's pants <laughs> is a great one. I told you I had a job to do. Sure, just doing your job. Tell me, aside from all the silver, how are the benefits? Guybrush. Do you get health care for the repetitive stress injuries caused by all the backstabbing and cutting scene. off people's hands? Guybrush is... Does that Sean as well? We really wanted Guybrush's sort of last words to Morgan to be words of annoyance and anger to increase the insane poignancy of what's to come. Uh, spoilers. Spoilers. Spoiler alert. Ah, here comes some fan service. <laughs> As Elaine yeah. recounts the entire history of her relationship with Guybrush. After shanghaiing a crew to take him to Monkey Island, he totally failed to rescue me from the evil clutches of the ghost pirate Lechuk. One wonders why she uh, stays with him, uh, given, given the truth behind all this stuff. It's uh, all filtered through the pox. looking for the treasure of Big Whoop. I didn't hear from him for three years after that. Turn me into a bird. Ah, the left the seat up joke. It's it's everything. How, how often do you use that? Yeah. <laughs> it's, it's really at, fundamentally at the uh, disparity between the sexes, right there. Yeah, that so. is that is the wall between us all. And now comes what we call a huge chunk of cheese dialogue, which uh, <laughs> which. Thank God we had Dennis yes. come in to make this scene actually much better than it had any right being, because it's really just a bunch of guys talking. That's true. It's actually the longest cut scene in the entire season. Yeah, I had to sit next to Dennis while I did all this, and it, was, uh, it wasn't fun for, for anyone. It was, just, it was just, how do we make this look interesting? <laughs> There's a lot of camera cuts, a lot of... Uh, <laughs> a lot of a lot of awesome acting. So, yes. <laughs> unfortunately, the uh, the voice goes in pretty early, and the, the animations and the camera work and stuff like that go in pretty late. So there was a long period of time where, if you were playing the game, you saw the scene, and it was just static, static. static. <laughs> yeah. Sugar cakes. This is a long scene. But yeah, it's, it's like a the, third over. It's the turn from the end of the second act to the beginning, or the end of the first act to the beginning of the uh, second act, and it's just like big long cutscene at the end of it, and then a big long cutscene at the uh, beginning of the next <laughs> yeah. one. But yeah, this wasn't even the worst part. We're not even to the worst part yet. Yeah, this is actually the cool. Part. Well, and the thing is, like, I think this might have been Dennis's only cutscene in Monkey that he's ever done, or at least his first. Yeah, his first. So, he so he was he was working completely blind in a new project, and I think he did a pretty pretty damn good job. Oh yeah. My name is Luchuk, and I can tell you exactly what Guybrush did. This is one of these things. Early on, we knew this had to be the ultimate hero turn for Luchuk. In order to, in order for anything that's to come to work. What Chuck had to be believable right at that moment as the guy who's saving Guybrush. 
and uh, I can attest to all of this. Thank you. It's a good testament to uh, the cutscene there and the acting. It it actually kind of works. People believe it. Yeah, yeah basically, like, basically what we were imagining was that you as the player would be right along with Guybrush and in, in not really believing that uh, yeah. that LeChuck had turned good for a long, long time, and that this would be the the spot where you would question yourself and and really think, well, geez, maybe he really is a good guy. Just save me. <laughs> Turns out I had an unknown. But wait, there's a whole lot more. Corridors, uh, <laughs> a power far more insidious than I. Should we start pointing the finger at the voodoo lady? Yes. I submit to the court this journal. This journal, which we're not going to show you, but which actually has lots of pages of the voodoo lady explaining her plot. <laughs> Trust us, it's in there. <laughs> <laughs> You will find detailed plans laid out by the voodoo lady over the course <laughs> Quick, read it, read it. I, re okay. I really, okay. I really love his pronunciation of voodoo lady. <laughs> My seemingly endless cycle of ironically comical death and disturbing resurrection. My obsession with the darling Elaine. I remember Dennis going through a few different revisions of how Elaine reacts to that line. Yes. Yeah. About how, how into it she is or how she blows him off. I've always been amused how when LeChuck changed from demon to human, his hat and belt buckle changed. Happy yeah, happy. Yeah. <laughs> I've got it up to me I catch with all this land-loving lollygagging. I'm off to plunder me some treasure. <laughs> That's a, Elaine basically speaking for the player at this point. <laughs> I've had it. Go cure your wife. Look at all those little candle flames, how cool they are. There's a lot of, of emotional charge in this episode, and this really was the one that I wanted all along, oh, to have yeah. all the dynamics of Oops. the characters just come to a peak at their emotional levels. Especially here. Here we go, Nick Herman at his finest. And where will we discover that a monkey, <laughs> a monkey has killed more <laughs> well, yeah. I'm surprised more people online didn't, didn't think, think that, that, yeah. that Jacques had killed more than... For me, this was the most important scene in the entire series. <laughs> From the day one, we were the first time. Yeah, fortunately, we knew that all along, so yeah. that we could do we could do a lot of lay a lot of groundwork to, to make it work in the other episodes. Of, uh, entrails and uh, <laughs> like oh yeah, everywhere. yeah. 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 Actually, the original cut, the when actual coughed, one. It was pink mist. When I first saw it and it wasn't done, I panicked. <laughs> I said, oh, oh no, it's, it, I'm yeah. not getting any emotion out of this, and I, I drew up all these storyboards with this long death march, and uh, <laughs> it was really way over the top, and everybody kind of calmed me down and said, yeah. relax, we got it, we're going to make it good, and they oh, did. It was, it was great. I love that sound. <laughs> <laughs> I think I had that in myself because it wasn't there. <laughs> the scene is actually one of the reasons why I really like the previous episode. Yeah. We set it up good. We set it up. And also, this is my favorite right here. Sandwich. Cue music. Yes. Ah, oh, the best. <laughs> the director's notes uh, has uh, Guybrush utters this line angrier than anything ever. And then amazingly, he does a whole bunch of puzzles and ends up here. <laughs> <laughs> including... Cool down a little bit. Yeah. I'll show you who's done for. Including a really cool map folding puzzle. <laughs> We had <laughs> we had to work on getting this puzzle. Designing this puzzle took like two weeks to come up with things that made use of everything that we had done <laughs> in the rest of the episode. So we ended up with moths eating a turban. <laughs> I wasn't Pretty convinced elaborate. the hand hat was going to work. Without my hand to supply him with more jus de vie, all those wounds are going to be starting to catch up with him. <laughs> Seeing bald descent makes it all worth it. Yes. <laughs> Bald is almost always funny. I've got about three characters in Sam and Max who are going to make bald. <laughs> Including Sam. Wait. Oh. oh. I think that's our... Uh, Fargo. Fargo. What's, no, that was uh, the... <laughs> oh, the Wilhelm? Wilhelm, yeah. Wilhelm, yeah. Wilhelm yeah. screamed. <laughs> is that the first Wilhelm in a Telltale game? Uh, I don't think so. No. <laughs> Couldn't possibly be. I hope not, but I, I can't. Guybrush got much better Swish. at throwing by this point. <laughs> he practiced while he was in the manatee. Yeah. <laughs> well, that was a little antic, Lamech. Whoa! Now 
That's an Esponja Grande. But how will I use it to cure... Here's a little thing you may notice about my writing. I'm a way too big a fan of interrupting lines with action. <laughs> it drives our choreographers <laughs> batty. <laughs> Probably not Jake as much as interrupting <laughs> lines with other lines, though. Yeah. Uh, I picked up on your love of alliteration and tried to incorporate that as much as I could. It's a crutch. <laughs> <laughs> it's a style. Uh, Guybrush? Elaine, are you alright? I... I think so. And we're all like totally wrapped up in watching the scene and kind of good speak. Oh yeah, commentary. Her, right. her uh, mouth tastes like coleslaw because LeChuck loves coleslaw. That's a little known monkey fact. Everybody's happy. LeChuck has the exact same key he had from the second episode. We were so happy when he realized he had one of those. <laughs> You're welcome, Mike. I convinced him that it was the only way to win Elaine's hand in unholy matrimony. I know that wasn't planned for me. Unholy this. When we did the first episode, we thought I would never guess that unholy this was going to get called back. <laughs> over and over. And it was done brilliantly. good fun. Is that you? So I got to do uh, Morgan's death and Guybrush's death in this yeah. episode. And yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Way to keep killing off our characters, man. Yeah. They so spend a lot of time in HR. Yeah. <laughs> You're good at the murder. But I'd be willing to share my booty if you catch me drift. Again, in the I'm not proud department, uh, a booty joke um, in during Guybrush's death. Yeah. Biggest emotional moment. <laughs> I like Guybrush watching. Yeah, Guybrush. Yeah, LeChuck is really rubbing it in. That's... You originally had a much more overt joke of some sort in there. Probably. I love this shot. Yeah, this is, this yeah. is, this is definitely Greg Killian. This yeah. Is, it was originally called for to be a much longer Guybrush view, but Greg kind of smartly trimmed it. Ah, that be the stuff. Anything. <laughs> One thing I also like about this is the whole LeChuck transforming is like totally background and inconsequential compared to what's going on here. That that melee to monkey line is probably my favorite. Elaine line in the whole series. Yeah, no, I love that. I love that delivery. Also, great Earl. read. Earl, Earl Bowen. Earl Bowen, everybody. <laughs> yeah. Everybody went, ah! the newly deceased, I feel I should point out that you wave your sword. He looks so like weird after movie. seeing him for like most of the season yeah. as, as a good guy. You fight like a pox infected undead cow. Nice guy. How does it end? I have to know. Oh. So you play as Elaine in the next chapter. Yeah, so yeah. <laughs> <laughs> We were briefly talking about the possibility of like just really messing with the uh, audience after this one and saying, well, yeah, Guybrush not tested that well, and people really like Morgan, <laughs> and so, you know... So we killed both time, of them. Time for the series them. to move on. <laughs> yeah, it's time for the, you know, the Guybrush babies from now on, and uh, <laughs> all that stuff. And, but we realized we probably couldn't get away with that. Uh, but, uh, yeah, with the... Uh, People received this episode very nicely. Randy couldn't be here tonight. Yeah. He has a life or something. <laughs> nah. What's that? Video games. <laughs> we didn't get to play as the hand in this episode either. Oh, okay. Well, that's the other thing is we did, uh, we intentionally uh, had the... Uh, the, the uh, pox infested hand crawl off into the jungle because we didn't want to see it when the pox was cured for various <laughs> and sundry reasons mm -hmm. that will become apparent later. Uh, I think we need to do a, like a spin off series with that. With the hand? Just the hand, yeah. yeah. You play it. People hand. talked about it at length. They really wanted, uh, you know, the hand and Miss Pretty Whiskers together fight, you know, <laughs> solving crime. crimes. Fighting crime okay. and. Uh, so, <laughs> We did try really hard to get uh, some puzzles in there where you actually 
control the hand, but they never really fit the story that we were telling. So. Yeah. I think we can get uh, so the hand and pretty whiskers to uh, fight against our arch nemesis Murray and Treasure Crab. Yes. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah, and the just, season is writing itself. Yeah. It's, uh, <laughs> uh, this episode also marked the first time I think you ever see the voodoo lady outside of her shack um, in mm. any Monkey Island game. Breaking new ground. Yeah, it's very All strange. Right. To, it, was, it was very strange to actually put now put her in jail. And luckily, we didn't have to make her walk. Uh, which, oh, this was the first time we saw her stand, right? Standing. I don't know because she's in the jail, so I think we she's don't. Actually sitting I on think she's stool. actually oh, sitting really? in the jail. <laughs> <laughs> we don't actually have any. Yeah. There's no uh, proof. Um, <laughs> this episode also did initially ship with a very amusing bug that uh, if you did something incorrectly you could actually get Guybrush stuck in jail forever <laughs> so, Ooh. yeah we got that fixed pretty quickly but that was uh hey, wasn't this the episode that you wanted to have the end credits just having i think it was hemlock mcgee singing oh yeah acapella oh. during oh, the entirety yeah, of the end yeah credits. i wanted hemlock mcgee to be singing <laughs> ladies night acapella because <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so that says disinger for a day was that a deliberate misspelling or uh, or, or not Either way, it's funny. Let's say it's <laughs> deliberate. <laughs> Jokes. Yeah, we do everything Hilarious. on purpose. Hilarious. Yeah. <laughs> Hilarious. Um, we don't usually put uh, much of the content of our games in the hands of the uh, of the audience, but um, we we did do that this time. We ran yeah, a contest, we... and people submitted lines to be to be used in the uh, in the trial scene. Yeah, and, and we we ended just... up selecting the he ruined my perfectly good X because we figured we could probably dismiss that case with just about two lines of dialogue and it would be the easiest <laughs> thing for us to do rather than making a huge art intensive puzzle out of it. Uh, in hindsight, I some I realized after we had done the gag with the broken X marks the spot thing that we really should have had like uh, his X. Uh, wife, his broken ex-wife or girlfriend there, which would be <laughs> much funnier and grimmer, uh, and not what people uh, were expecting. Uh, uh, I probably uh, wouldn't have translated as well. My uh, perfectly good ex. My Still, perfectly good hindsight. Ex. Yes. <laughs> Speaking of ex, who's, who's ex-Adam? That, that is my brother. Hey. Right. Shout out. Sweet. Booyah. How do you pronounce that? Adam. Uh -huh. It's a silent X. It's a silent X. Brendan. Uh, <laughs> um, Brendan. Our favorite telltale and pet. Another, and yet another monkey baby added. <laughs> Lots of babies were made during this yes. production. <laughs> That's as it a, should be. That's about the, uh, that I think, the, about the sixth or seventh as of the fourth episode. So, yes. We make them almost as fast as we make the game. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Uh, we're we're right. going to wrap it up, up now. now. Take right. it easy.